There's a lot, a lot of two there. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go to the school department about the yeah. uh, after but, about yeah, the. So uh, I would first of all let's let's remember that in in 2001, one week before I took office, our bond rating was five points lower than it is today. What was it? It was BAA three. Okay. That's where we had a five point downgrade on our bond rating one week before I took office in 2001. When I left the office in 2005, we had a, a, a B, an A, A2, A1, A1, five points. And with a positive outlook, and when I came back, we inherited a neg negative outlook because we did, we did uh, do a couple things that uh, impacted our bond rating. We're, we're, the picture that Mr. Lambie just painted, quite frankly, we're in, headed in the right direction, not the wrong direction. And he's right that, and as we've shared that information with him, that first of all, it's not a $48 million unfunded liability. We've already corrected that in, in, the, in this year's audit. It's closer to $38 million, which is not all that great, but it's certainly not $48 million. And then the work, we had a meeting in here today that has shifted the police retirees into the Medicare program, uh, as well as has as been mentioned, we, we put forward a, uh, the concept of a, of a trust for the OPED uh, cost that, uh, that are being referred to here. And that, that unfunded liability that, that has just been spoken of and thrown out as $48 million is going to be a whole lot closer to $20 million than it is to, uh, you know, $48 million in terms of with, within the next um, uh, just just on what we're working on today, and that doesn't count what we're going to be working on in the, on the police pension. As far as the school department goes, I applaud surpluses. My God, uh, especially in the environment that we're in, in terms of schools, the way the schools are operating around the state of Rhode Island, delivering large multi-million dollar uh, deficits back into the laps of town councils. I think anybody who's served on this town council, uh, as long as I've, I've been around, uh, has never had that happen with the school department, and we run a very strong financial, uh, you know, house in the school department. And it's good. I much prefer them having a three million three, whatever the number is, in a surplus position because it gives them the flexibility to keep our taxes down. They appropriated almost nine eight hundred ninety-seven thousand of that last year. They appropriate another uh, in this current budget, uh, you know, to keep the to keep that cost down. So. The picture that is, we're actually headed in the right direction in a very difficult environment. Uh, and I'll just reinforce again that a community is only going to be as strong as the school department is. We need to hold the school department accountable, quite frankly, uh, for slipping as far as we have uh, in a state that has slipped even further in New England. Uh, so this is the time to do that. Um, and what we're projecting in terms of a tax increase uh, unless you had a you know a casino in your backyard making money, uh, it would be very difficult to maintain uh, a record that we continually go below a self-imposed cap. Uh, we work very hard to get the fire districts to actually adopt that self-imposed cap on a town-wide basis. We have commissioners that talk against it. We're we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, uh, and this particular impact is is negligible in terms of what's at stake if in fact we don't turn our schools around and do it very quickly and uh, you know i can I'll, I'll i'll hold my comments in terms of that when, this, when we talk about the schools in terms of what we're trying to get done and what the prospects are in that space but what mr lamby has, has painted there is really not an accurate picture in terms of where we are as uh, fiscally uh, certainly not where we're going to be we're heading in the right direction uh, every indication shows that to be, that to be true, and uh, this particular budget that's in front of you, uh, which which is going to have a tax increase of less, uh, closer to one percent than two percent, uh, in this day and age, um, and with our resources that we have, the way that we're structured as a community, um, you know, it's it's not the greatest thing in the world, but certainly it's not the worst thing in the world, and it in this environment, so. I stand by the fact that it's a, it's a good thing to do to put the million dollars forward conditionally the way that we have it structured. Um, it does give us for the first time uh, the ability to really have to hold uh, the school department accountable for what that's going to be spent on. I think that they want to be held accountable. I think that they have every intention of really making a significant improvement in, in, in our schools. And 
And we've already gone over, uh, for those who attended the, the library session the, uh, the other night, the economics that are attached to this, to this need and this, this you know, absolute necessity, quite frankly, as, as people select what communities they're going to live in and uh, the communities they're going to buy homes in, uh, if, if you don't reverse what's happening in our schools, not only in Cumberland, but the state of Rhode Island, it, 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 you, you really, it doesn't matter what else you do on the finances, quite frankly. There, will, there won't be a pension to collect if you don't turn that around. So you, you, you and there won't be a house to sell. Like, you know, go to, you know, I got the headlines in, the, in my office there, what happened in Central Falls. You, they can't give homes away in Central Falls. And now in Woonsocket, they're not going to be able to give away homes in Woonsocket. So this is a critical stage. I totally agree. And there's really, the, if you look at the facts, there's no option but to hold our schools accountable to get better results than they're getting right now. And you need to make an investment uh, to do that. And um, I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, you all set, Mr. Lamb, Mr. Pignano. I want to speak to that comments that he made regarding the deficit, the surpluses, I'm sorry. Make sure the numbers are accurate, first of all. Yeah, if you, if you look at the audit report, it does show the, the, the school department that has a cumulative surplus in all categories, designated, undesignated reserves, whatever, $3.4 million. But if you look at, and we're using a million of that in this year's budget, so it would be two. How much of it is designated, meaning you can only spend uh, Undesignated, it, uh, the ability, the, uh, freed up to use on anything was a million four of that three four. And you're using 900 of it? Uh, no, we're using 900 of the two million. Oh. Okay. And we still have the million four left undesignated. But if you look at our budget, the budget grew from 52 to 55 million roughly is about 2.8 million dollars. And if you looked at the um, estimated numbers I gave you last week for fiscal 14 and 15, you notice that each of those budget years have growths of about 2.9 million and then 15, a growth of up to $4 million in expenditures. If we were to take the entire $3 million that we have in surplus right now and just plug it into this budget to fix, to, to plug a hole this year, next year that would, money wouldn't be there. We'd be looking for that $3 million plus the $3 million that the budget's going to grow. We'd be here asking you for $6 million next year. That's how cities and towns get in trouble when they to choose to kick the can and not raise taxes. That's what happened in Woonsocket for years. They didn't raise taxes for years and all of a sudden they need a 13% tax increase that people don't want to approve up there. You have to sometimes have timely, small tax increases to balance, to balance budgets or you get yourself in a position where you need big, you know, you need to large tax increases to plug holes that, you know, um, were created by drawing down one-time revenues. Like so, Providence too. You worked in Providence. Uh, for a while. Providence, we were we raised taxes in Providence. <laughs> they have the highest taxes around, pretty pretty high taxes in Providence, which I'm not proud of, but you know that that that's a reality. That was just a reality. And if I you look at the sheet I gave you last week, you see that the you see that the taxpayer effort, taxpayer effort, town appropriation town appropriation effort in Cumberland is at the ver is way at the bottom of the list compared to other communities. You asked about Coventry. Coventry gives nearly $42 million of taxpayer money to their school system compared to the $36 million we give in Cumberland, $6 million more. They're a very comparable district in terms of size, student population. Yeah, they're a little bit, they have a few, they have a few they're, they're just over 5,000 kids with like 4,800. So they're a little bit, yeah. a little bit bigger. Do you have a question? I just want to make sure I understand this because it's easy to throw around millions of dollars and to quite frankly you know i still have a hard time getting my hands around that i don't deal with millions of dollars in my house i deal with you know dollar here and a dollar there so to hear a million dollars is can be quite stag you know you know staggering unrestricted funds in the school department's control that you can choose to spend any way you want is 1.4 million dollars the the, the, out, the the balance of that surplus, you cannot just willy-nilly spend it any way you want. Well, you, it's designated, correct? It's designated for specific things, okay, but the so school committee, in fairness, to be honest with you, the school committee could reappropriate some of those right. things. Some of them are de designated for certain but capital the, items that need to be done in education The unrestricted items. amount is 1.465. In, okay. in, in the audit, yes. Okay. And I've asked Mr. Lamby to call you on this to get that number. To constantly throw around $3 million isn't an accurate picture. And it, it just... To put that into people's, my mind, that I can understand, that $1.4 million to your budget 
represents to a household of a say $60,000 income, $1,700 in the savings account. That's what it equals. So we can throw $1.4 million around and it, you know, after a while it becomes funny money. We don't understand it, we can't put our hands around it. But if someone earns $60,000 a year, that's like having $1,700 in the savings account. We all know to be in fiscally sound shape, it's recommended to have a month or two of expenses in, in the savings account. So we are not allowing the school committee to uh, hoard money and, and hurt other town departments and, and create crises in other areas. They are being fiscally responsible. As a matter of fact, they should have a probably a little more. If we had some you know, catastrophic events this winter with boilers or whatever, we, you know, we'd, we'd need to spend the money. We need to, we, we need to solve the problem. And I just want to make sure, because I have a hard time understanding it. And I want to thank you for clearing it up. Thank you. Thank you.